Okay, that should bring us live at, uh, well, exactly 11.20, go figure, right on time. Uh, we happen to be looking at a 10 minute of um, gold. And uh, the significance of that one was is we had a uh, very nice daily setup for gold. So that worked out beautifully from an overall standpoint. But there were a couple of uh, topics we wanted to go over. Um, and let me just move this one. Okay, that's where it goes. Um, there were some questions about uh, like LVS and uh, Caterpillar being at relatively interesting positions and whether or not that, you know, the readings would be the same for each. And I think if I just cut these two in half, that might make them too narrow. We'll take a look. Otherwise, I can expand the screen by just going like this. Anyway, we're going to go over some um, up-down power calculations. From a view standpoint, and that would be down here. And so when we're looking at, um, well, in this particular case, uh, Caterpillar. This was an interesting one because we've been seeing this a lot on a lot of stocks. When our expanded ratio histogram orange line stays well above, it's a very bullish indication. And maintaining that line going all the way through, um, it's a tough one for some because they're looking at things that they consider to be very overbought, and it may very well be overbought. In fact, uh, you know, short signals came in. You just don't get a trigger from them unless you had this yellow line move back above. And in this particular case, um, has not done so. And on Caterpillar, I mean, despite, uh, you know, if I put in the extreme histogram, we'll see that it's overbought. That well, was, at least, I should say can't really say that it's overbought. So when you're at positive extremes right here, overbought, look for a little bit of a retrace, at least to those lows. And it did, in fact, come back to those lows. Still has to retest these two, and then eventually this one is not a positive extreme, so I wouldn't consider that on the list. For me, I'd be looking somewhere around this 92, 95 range. Um, but as we decline here, and this was something that um, I'd put up for even Chartly um, on StockTwits, where they were talking about, you know, even the market being overbought and stuff, and I kept explaining, well, depends on your version of overbought. If you're using a regular oscillator, yeah, the market appears overbought. When we start looking at it from this more detailed uh, view of our extreme histogram, when we get inside of negative 8, and I'll put that up, you see the differential right there, it's the third one from the bottom, it says negative 7.93. Right, that's overbought. But once you get back past that, you're no longer overbought. So the fact that we're at the exact same price just a couple of days later on CAT, it's not overbought. And yes, it can expand from there. And the reason being is we've been following this orange on the expanded ratio histogram above as very positive from a trend standpoint. Now it started off negative, but as soon as it crossed back above this um, cyan line here, we expect the yellow to overtake it from a bearish standpoint. And when that didn't happen, you, know, you get the exact opposite uh, effect, and that is a continuation of the upside. And you could kind of equate it to shorts being forced to cover. Um, the next area you would be looking at, and let's go ahead and just, um, well, I'm just going to go ahead and disable these real quick because I wanted to show this up-down power relationship. Now, it's not always an immediate effect, but what you're looking at when you're trying to, to gauge this from an up-down power standpoint, you're looking to see whether there's an aggregate of too many of something, okay? Um, with regard to, you know, ratios, what you're trying to, to find is imbalances. And so in this particular case, we look at the numbers, and um, because it's the only one on here, I can just increase it. We're looking for ratios that are an imbalance, and in this particular case, when we get to about 70%, that becomes the imbalance. And the easy way to calculate it is, in this case, we you know, don't even worry about what we're looking at as far as negative or positive. So in this particular day here, it was 336, that's the lower number, and we're going to divide it by the 525. And when we do that, we get 64%. All right, that's right in the middle of the range, and I call that sort of like the Death Star for shorts, 
because they haven't got enough into the setup to create a short, and yet they've shorted enough to where they're fuel for an increase in overall buying. And this is exactly what they do. Now, it gets more interesting when you move into a situation like this, because it's like, well, how do I calculate if I get a negative and a positive in this particular case? What you're looking for once you have one move to a negative and the other one stays into a positive, um, in this particular case for a bull setup, um, what you're looking for now will be the first higher extreme. This is actually a bear trap when you look at it. Now, if the white had moved to negative, then you could do the calculations uh, like it did over here. Uh, but as soon as that bull side moves to the upside, um, shorts have a problem, particularly if they've averaged in over a long period like this. And um, it's slightly skewed to the positive side, and that's fine because at the end of the day what we're looking for are opportunities when we know that price is oversold and there are too many of one side of uh, a player being shorts into a setup. So, like here, another perfect example of come down, move to the negative side for a couple of bars, price is declining, reaches just below that negative 50, and then boom, as soon as you start to see the up pivot, you know that you're going to have a pretty decent short cover rally. It's not going to just be a one-time event. And then, of course, look, you turn to green trend, and it becomes an even bigger bonus. Um, now, if we look at some of the more negative setups, you can come back up here. And this is where I always like to look for declining uh, moves from my um, buyers. And like this kind of erratic move within an up climb, that is not good. It should be a nice steady rise if it's going to maintain itself from an uptrend standpoint. And you'll see this a lot when you run through um, and look at charts with the up-down power. And it becomes very interesting. Now, here, even in this one, you never really got a strong setup. What your earliest indication was from the oversold was the, obviously at the MBI uh, and GAM setup. But until you moved to the positive, and then obviously ended up with the bifractals at that particular point in the red trend. And uh, you had enough short fuel at that point to help drive it forward. Um, let's look at LVS from the same concept. And we can see almost the exact same setup as far as the expanded ratio histogram. And you can see that has extended itself and arrives if we put our extreme histogram in here. Oh, wrong spot. So we've got to format it, and what that does is put it in graph 2, it needs to go into graph 1, and no axis is correct because we want it to float, because it has nothing to do with price. And that's important to note. Um, you know, I had even a question just today on um, momentum aspects, and someone was asking, you know, what kind of books can I read? What kind of books can you read? Well, you really don't want to be reading, you know, various string theory concepts and stuff, because it's not going to help you. The problem you've got with most um, momentum calculations is that they're basing it on price and average of price. And anytime you're starting to do your calculations off price alone, um, I think you're always going to have problems. You're always going to be late to a game and um, easily manipulated because oftentimes they will move price in a specific spot so that it looks negative from what traditional indicators. And that's not hard to program a computer to do. Um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, calculation, in fact. Um, let me minimize this for me. Oh, yeah. What are we? Minus 1.75. I think I should have a position in this. I didn't get filled on it. Okay. I was trying to short some more into this uh, overall bullish setup. Not happening. That's okay. Let us take a look at this. Um, I was surprised at the interest that we got from. Um, the power mo in this configuration, which is the second setup, let me put on the traditional uh, power momentum. But if there was there any other questions on the up down power and the calculation, particularly, I mean, if we go to a negative um, setup, let me find one right here. In this particular case, well, let me do it on the other one since we had fewer um, indicators on it. Let's find a good negative setup. Right here was a good one. Alright, so the reading right there. 
says negative 2, negative 275. You just ignore the negative aspect of it. There's no need for it. And I even ignore the decimal. So I'll just put in 205. And then I'll divide it by the 275. In this particular case, you get 74%. So I would begin to start looking for an up move as soon as I get it. Now, this is something that we talked about vis-a-vis uh, -vis Apple. And we had this high ratio. And the expectation was is that the open, you would know it because immediately on an open, that's going to be positive setup. You're going to end up with a higher move, um, and the ratio is going to change as well as you're going to get a much better positive on your extreme. Um, and this is why I pointed out with that setup. It didn't happen at the start of... Um, the open and okay we already know everything else was ugly about it there's no reason to just hope that it's going to change you know you just get out take the loss on that setup and you wait for your next setup and in that particular case because apple from its daily if we look at the apple daily red trend green dot fine no issues with any of that but uh, from a discount standpoint you're looking for about uh, you know two dollars plus from that close well, when this opened lower, I had to go ahead and say, okay, that's not going to work from, you know, what we were hoping from an extreme standpoint right there. This can last for a couple of days, uh, even more. It can last for three or four like it did over here. Um, but they tend to become, you know, basing periods. And so we'll see if that's the setup. What was immediately known is as soon as we, uh, well, it was even known in the pre-market, um, when we were lower, the extreme histogram was already lower. And, and now sitting at minus 71, and the previous day was only minus 67. That was not going to improve. And when that happens, you know that it's not going to get any better. Um, no reason to look for it. So in this particular case, you know, that green dot obviously had there. We got these people get stopped out, which obviously is going to create more negative momentum. Um, but what I start with is, you know, buy stop at this particular point. Now that we're down this far. You move it to what your original target was. And like I said, uh, at the end of the day, if we finish in the lower half of the range, um, buy stop will drop down to 496 as long as it's still above the overall uh, stop point. So it's not something where you just arbitrarily jump into it just because uh, you have to actually have um, proper momentum move. Just that straightforward. Nothing special about it. Let me see if there's any other unique anomalies with our power momentum that we would want to look for. It's pretty straightforward in here because I mean, you can see the direct correlation between shorts and control of the setup. And another one you want to watch is when you're in a very negative mode and coming back up from deep trend, particularly after having been below the red line. Um, areas where the histogram stays negative and you've popped positive. This will indicate to you also an overbought, and that's where I always pay very close attention then to my extreme histogram and my overbought in that extreme histogram, uh, because you can get that rollover pretty much, and oftentimes what will happen is you'll pop here, you get one big one, and then it just falls right off, and that's usually that exhaustion kind of uh, uh, gap move, yeah, sort of like right here, where you've been deep negative popped up this wasn't bad if what you look for is you want to see the red move to the positive that would be negating a sense of overbought but the fact that the red stayed negative um, was an indication that this one was pretty much running out of steam and you almost had a spot with it there but it got really overbought and then it just rolled right back down and that that's what caterpillar okay it's interesting to see now from a Caterpillar standpoint, we were also looking at the two power modes. And let me get rid of this because then we can utilize the power mode to get a little bit more precise when looking at our up-down power. Not related, but uh, gives us this subtle differential. And important on the numbers, the histogram right here are these last two. These two lines up here are the bigger ones. Um, they're more incorporated too with that the secondary power momentum. When you talk about valid, that becomes an interesting one. They're negated in the sense that these guys will have sold and moved their stops uh, and most likely converted to the other side. What you have to have will be additional fractal buyers. Those start targets are going to be lower. What typically happens is, we'll, on a turnaround, these guys will get back in at the exact same spot that they stopped out of. And unless they can get an even better 
position and that's typically how they look yeah on the power mo what you want to do is you want to divide that uh, the smaller number depending on which side you're on so whichever side you're on whether it's positive or negative from the um, zero line here so in this particular case you're going to take the white line because uh, the bulls are in power on the negative side I mean the bears are on the, the negative side are in power so in this particular case you'll take 2762 divided by the 34 um, 80 whatever and we can see what that number becomes it's going to be up there because um, you can see that uh, some longs had some expectations for a positive move they're just getting hit with a lot of supply 27 63 divided by 34 91 79% that's actually lower than the other day but what I was looking for is I want to see the first positive move up and you'll know that immediately because it'll happen at the open of a day and boom it'll be there where it becomes an anomaly is when you get this kind of situation where it's uh, over 100 percent because in this particular case you're over 100 percent and your power momentum went to the positive so it was a double whammy here it was a pretty much just a hope speculation on the gap if the gap were higher and you might see a positive move and that's why it was very specific it's like okay we're buying at the close here and we'll hold for the gap the gap was lower didn't work out fine take the loss on there it's just what you have to do um, it's not a hope and a prayer because we know that anyway we're still going to be looking for discount in the red trend from the green dot setup anyway so that that you know was a low problem we knew it was only about 54 percent i mean that is pretty low 54 percent from uh most of the steps, I mean, a lot of what we're looking for are usually in the higher 60s. But then again, uh, even Bidenese dots were in the upper 60s, and it didn't work out. So it can happen. There's no question about that. It's not very common, uh, but it does happen. So, so I wanted to go back to the power mo setups. All right, so here's from Caterpillar. Also, an interesting anomaly with uh, Caterpillar. When you move to a negative on this extreme uh, reading here, that's just not supposed to happen. That's an inverse relationship. And this is where we get into some of these crossover setups. Um, the, the diamond ones are very interesting to me because um, they usually resolve to the opposite setup. Uh, in this particular case, you know, you had your crossover, typically bullish when that happens. It crossed back below, but when it forms that little diamond, I usually look for four periods. Um, for resolution back to that upside overall and um, let's count them here and see if we get that number so it was uh, one two three and then four yeah so dramatic I mean in this case it was dramatic because we had this huge anomaly but now if I throw in power mode two we get a little bit of a differential setup here all right so I've left everything the same except for all I've done is remove the histogram and so you can see that anomaly in real terms and I was pointing this one out the other day I mean this is all based off of um, a golden ratio 1.618 um, fractal setup I mean those of you who saw Isabella's uh, science report um, identical numbers and here's the thing the blue is at plus 1.618 for a multiple and the green is at a negative so they're Realistically, there's no way these numbers should reach unless certain uh, very bizarre variables take place. And so you get these anomalies periodically. Um, and within them, we can look at, you know, various setups to see whether they're, you know, more for a short setup being below. Um, particularly if we get the green ones shooting up above with the white, uh, those become extraordinarily bullish. They, uh, see, they don't happen that often. Um, but when they do, uh, it's not supposed to cross that way. You know, the, the, the dark cyan is supposed to always be above the green. So, kind of uh, unique within some of those setups to uh, see that. And um, it's definitely worth looking at uh, from a unique perspective. Now, we can gauge trend using the old cyan and yellow lines that we normally talk about the histogram mostly. But these are the exact same lines right up here. And what we can look for is trend passing above. So moving above staying above the cyan now in this particular case we should be seeing weakness from caterpillar and we're not 
So interesting within that setup, and that's what we're seeing from the expanded ratio histogram that was kind of uh, divergent to this. Would I still be uh, more leaning towards a short setup with this than a long? Yeah, uh, especially given this. So the fact that it's going against it, unusual. But unusual things can happen. Um, and it really hasn't moved all that much. I mean, it's just pretty much been back and forth within the same narrow band. I mean, gosh, I think we could even highlight that uh, range and see exactly how much it is. It's pretty tiny. Yeah, so it's within $2 back and forth over the last, you know. And that's a lot to do with the um, extraordinary, you know, bullish market in general. Um, you know, in some cases we've had some, a lot of short signals, but just no real triggers because even with this, it still buys. It didn't even give a short signal till right there to uh, cross over flip the next day, but now it's stayed consistently under the pink, and that is a negative, but what you want to see it move is below this uh, yellow one right here, and that would give you a much stronger view at a longer downtrend from a uh, continuation standpoint, at least. And so if we look at um, LVS, same concept. You can see it peaked right here, Staying bullish within that setup gave a crossover for a sell right there, and that's fine. I mean, it wasn't a bad signal, 52.44. Uh, it dropped down to 51.50, so I mean, it moved down a dollar in that, but it stayed below, and it's now crossed below the blue. Um, that should put more additional pressure to the downside for LVS, same with CAT. So this is where, like when I was posting some, several of these about when LVS, CAT, MA, they were all having this very consistent up move that just wasn't deteriorating. And basically, um, LVS hasn't eased its overbought like you saw in CAT. Um, and WIN, I think, has actually been a little bit better. Let's put WIN up there real quick just to take a look. Because it doesn't matter the stock name as much as the configuration that you're seeing within the numbers. And that's the relationship that we're showing in these lines. It's, you know unique to each stock, but, um, you know, look at it, almost identical, but not as overbought as LVS. You notice that those were all positive extremes. Now, what I point out to people is we start to look for these positive extremes to get retraced. So in this particular case, you know, you got all the way down here for, um, oh, that's, I think that's Wyndham Hotels. I need another end. I was going to say, they didn't split that, did they? Because uh, Wyndham is over 100 plus. I mean, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, you can see, not as overbought as uh, LVS is in the same setup. Now, what I'm going to be watching is, as soon as this yellow can shoot up above the orange, then that becomes, to me, a very attractive point to buy my longer uh, range put, because I'm likely to see a greater deterioration. Um, what you have to be interested in is now uh, any new buy crossovers when you're not overbought and you're at new highs. So we would turn to our shakeout to look at the shakeout for additional value to the high side and see, you know, how high our shakeout is. In this particular case, you know, it's up there but not crazy. I mean, that's above the warning line. You got you prepared. If you get that crossover below the uh, red here, then you might have a little bit more of a dip that would then give you your next buy setup. Not quite there yet. And that's going to happen, but that's just pretty consistent. We darken these lines up, that's why they're so thick. Um, normally I don't have them that thick, but I think it makes it a little easier to see from a visual standpoint. And actually, just, let's put that ES back up there real quick, because that always relevant. I look at the ES, um, also SPY. In fact, I'll change the ES one to SPY, and we can take a look at that as well. Gives you a broader market view. Now, see from a sell signal to the market, um, right here, it gave a sell signal and was looking for lower. So, 1465, it was looking for lower overall. Um, and actually, it's getting rather negative because you're well below this setup here. So, interestingly enough. Now, what you do want to watch is if you dip below the green line, that actually becomes bullish. And so, in which case, you can see this market is not overbought. When we look at this extreme histogram, you don't have an overbought market here. 
All right, so despite what some people are referring to as extraordinarily overbought, market should fall apart, yada, yada, yada. Um, this clearly tells us, because we know if we dip below this uh, cyan line and don't completely collapse off of it, that's a huge bullish for a uh, upside breakout. Okay, so that's a real, <laughs> something real to pay attention to. Let's put up SPY and see if we're getting similar. Because at the start of the very start of the year, we had a divergence between um, futures and the overall um, cash index, which was interesting. It happens periodically. Well, what you'll f typically see on a um, short type of setup when... We, we see that in our up-down power in here, where if, like, for instance, for the SPY, if this stays above uh, the, the bulls on the up-down power, and you've dipped below here, and you start getting, like, three to four days of it, um, it usually indicates that shorts have added into a setup and they're stuck. Now, we saw it from the ES standpoint, because we were getting this constant reading of about 56 to 60 percent, which means they were adding into the setup they just couldn't commit and get it up and overwhelm the number of buyers so we just had this extraordinary amount of buying uh, despite their attempt to short these things and that's why we popped up over here so it kind of gave it a real clue down these yellow lines all represent the crossovers and I kind of marked them um, visually to see except for where you get anomaly setups you know, in this particular case you had a nice little anomaly right there but these are all the crossovers and would reflect for, you know, sell signal. But, you know, you can see it could turn around within a day and become a buy signal. And that's where you begin to look for um, the moves below these two little yellow. And this is where you can bring in also the histogram for the up-down power. Um, I mean, the power momentum as well and see whether you've got the yellow above. And it starts to give you a preponderance moving towards the exact same issue. You know, and am I overbought? So this was a modest move. Like for an ES, though, it was very easy to play it because um, you know, in this particular case, you can just look for uh, the one-day move. You set your stop, and if you get stopped out, you're fine. So this one, well, from the SPY standpoint, 146.37 dropped to 145.43, so almost a dollar. So that's about 10 points overall. Doesn't look like a lot, but you know, when you're looking at it from the SPY standpoint, it's a full amount of 10 points. Now, if we look at our shakeout, because while I'm only putting these up here, you do need to, you know, and I'll do it in several charts. You want to have these additional ones because, you know, if I go to my expanded ratio histogram and we start to look at some of those, all right, now I have it in the thinner lines again, you can see <laughs> that orange staying above. Now, the yellow started moving. If the yellow had extreme passed over it, like it did over here, we expected lower, all right? We expected lower when it took place on this dive right here, except for when we crossed back above, the orange immediately went above and sort of took away the thunder of a decline. So th that kind of gives you that crossover moment where it's like, oh yeah, it was supposed to go red, uh, be negative, and it didn't work out that way because they overwhelmed it. And that's the dynamic nature. Things change, and they can change quickly. Um, you know, some moves, you know, are your ex expectation of them and timing can be altered based on what we get from these readings. And this is why I go over them every day um, and do a daily report because it is, you know, that significant. I mean, look at this from an Apple standpoint, okay? You're in a 15-minute chart and you're getting red dot shorts. Okay, that's... <laughs> That tells you you're overpot so fast, not even funny. Uh, and you know, I, I dumb these down so that they're simplistic um, to try and help people visualize a little bit easier. But I mean, this red trend has been, you know, all the way back from right here, we turned red trend and boom, it's just gone straight downhill. Put the extreme histogram, let's see what it readings were. Yeah, look at that. See, you just shake your head, but. Um, created these so we can move them. But look at that. Right there, that's that's overbought. You see that in the market, then you're like, and you see it in red trend, that's not about to turn to green trend. You know you've got a problem. And it's retraced that target all the way. And 
bottom one is 483. Talk about desolate for this. I mean, I don't know when I've seen a chart with no dots. I mean, um, Dot Alerts doesn't offer uh, the yellow one, and <laughs> the entire day, no no signals. Um, and then this one with a red dot uh, set up looking for discount. Crazy. Um, M, yeah, you know, that was an interesting one. It was last night I was... Um, going through some charts in the feed and um, one of the guys put up M and that he was undecided as to what to do with it. And um, like HLF, it had almost uh, identical readings. And so I was like, there's no need to be hesitant. Um, it looked extraordinarily strong. Okay, not only were you below the green, you had moved above the magenta. Um, I told him he was going to be remiss for letting that one go. And... Um, Boom. That was crazy. Yeah, we can put up CHK. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, well, I put the target. Let me put the mark the target here. I'll go ahead and put the info window up. Got to get a reading. There we go. Uh, 3816 is the upside target. What's the high been? 37.92, almost. Then a quick two-day setup. Um, that was just incredibly bullish because you dipped down here deep in the red trend, but you didn't go all the way to the the red line. You stayed right there. You popped up on a down day. Um, you know, I look for those, particularly when I saw this particular setup in here. And then even if we weren't using that, which most of you can't, um, I haven't had anyone ask for it who has the indicators. Um, Needless to say, the power mo turned positive right back here and continued to escalate. So that was the earliest indication that it was still going to be positive. Uh, let me right click and we want CHK. Alright, so. Here we can see on CHK, same thing with our power mo setup. Let me just disable this one real quick, and we'll just take a look at the power mo first. So dip down, not overbought in this case, and in fact very close to an oversold. And what's beautiful about this, it, you know, this is very similar to the Apple setup, and this is exactly what we were expecting from the Apple setup. Higher, extreme. Matching lows, I mean, you came right down here, matched your lows, that's perfect, love all that. You got your first positive move right here, um, deep in the red trend. If we look at our shakeout, we probably even got a better shakeout reading. Uh, let's see, we were negative 4, negative 5, and then right here it went to, yeah, even less, so that would have been it. So you had your earliest signal from your power mo was right here you had a confirmation with your shakeout right there all in all fine from all of those aspects let's look at our up down power all right from the up down power right here you went positive with your um, reading fine with that you, uh, bad situation here for shorts they're still caught in this setup that's going to feel this even higher sorry for them and um, Lastly, we'll add the expanded ratio histogram while we reduce these out of the way. Now, interesting right here, you had your expanded ratio. It's sort of a fight to zero, all right? But in this particular case, if you can see these numbers, I don't know if you can see them, enlarge it. Uh, because of the thicker line, but the orange is ahead of the yellow in this decline all the way through. And in fact, even right now, the orange is ahead. That's positive. Um, it's cleaner when you can see it like this, where it's really clear. You know, in the orange, you know, at first it was negative, but then boom, on the discount right there, the orange was ahead. So you can see how that uh, really expanded. So it looks very positive from that standpoint. Um, today, interestingly enough, though, the Power Mo, slight flip there, so that's something to be. Um, watching for, but then I look at the crossover. And so this crossover suggests to me that in four days, wherever this closes, I should still be higher. 
So, to me, this looks like the beginning of what would be a continuation move. And no problem, we would go ahead and say, fine, let's double check that by putting on that power mode too, just for the fun of it. And this is how you can do an analysis of a stock, just a couple of minutes. Now, I can do it even faster because I'll have a chart that on my 60 inch plasma, I can put all of these indicators and they're still at least three inches tall. So that makes it easy. Even if you didn't, you could just right click each one of these, disable them, and then just add in the other ones you have from your list and just click them. That easy. And you can scroll through them. It takes a couple of minutes. Or you could wait for ones that just have dots. You could do that too. You could wait for this to turn green trend. Um, in fact, I think from that shakeout, let's put that back up real fast. How close are we to getting to green trend? Um, go, well, it, it may close today and turn green. Okay? So, you may get this close and it'll be a green bar. Because we're already uh, over positive on the shakeout. So, let's look at the power mode. Two. I'm actually got to come up with a better name for that than Power Mode 2. <laughs> I will put the replay of this up on um, YouTube, so you'll have it there as well. Alright, in this particular case, you can see that we got the crossover right there. Um, follow through. So, everything was pretty consistent with that setup uh, overall. So, no real issues, to say the least, with that. So, very clean. Very clean on a CHK. Do you have any other questions on that one, Linda? Put up a Baidu, just for the heck of it. Yeah. See, it gave a sell the other day. And uh, though it's even been bullish because you get the fairly decent bullish market setup, um, it hasn't converted back to the other side, so I would expect that to uh, continue. It's positive extreme retraces. I mean, just looking for the low right there to be retraced uh, from a primary move off the gray dot. And full target would be this red dot. That could take another couple of days. That's down to 105.88 from Baidu standpoint. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, that's the Apple Daily. We don't need that one. We can look at the Google intraday setup, some of these real quick. Since we get some people who disappeared, then they'll miss out on the intraday stuff. <laughs> um, orange dot uh, buy setup there. So that's a nice recovery move. It gave the nice entries right here early on this morning, 15-minute uh, chart, and exploded off them, gave a little short setups. Hit the one of them, but, um, and that happens when you move to the extreme and then change trend. I usually go with the second version as the expectation, and then after that, you kind of, like, recognize that unless something breaks down, this one was sort of uh, a little too early. Um, no, what do you mean by um, alignment with the up-down power and the power mo? You want to take like different time frames and connect them. And that might be interesting to do. We'll put up Microsoft here real quick while I think about doing that. Best approach for it. MSFT. Now, aren't you glad you stuck with that uh, MSFT? I know you were concerned uh, that it might not get there, but uh, it's right on track with uh, the expectation. Um, no objection to that, so perfect there. And look at that beautiful, see this is exactly what we're talking about with uh, within Apple's decline right here, where we're below this. It's happened before in Apple, it's maybe gone another day. Um, can transition, and once it crosses over, you're going to get this nice explosive kind of move from it. And, um, you know, has Apple been beat enough to start to do that? Uh, we don't know yet. But if we put it up here, you can see the exact same configuration. 
uh, crossing over there from the yellow. It would be nice if it could get above the magenta. As soon as it gets above the magenta, um, I'd probably be going in much heavier on that overall setup. So that would be interesting. So Microsoft, yeah, it's working its way to the target there. Um, not overbought by any stretch. I know people sometimes when you when you get used to these indicators and you find yourself at the bottoms of a lot of these moves and catching areas where you would otherwise never have gotten in before because it's so close to you know what looks like a falling knife setup um, and then they turn around and they're pretty strong. You've got this huge move and you're thinking, uh, should I get out? Should I get out? And this is where. You know, that's why I wanted to turn around and give people the ABM, which is the trend follower. And then you can utilize setups like this. Now, even within this uptrend, is it likely that this can cross over and give you sell signals premature? Sure. But your other choice with those is you can just use that as saying, okay, yeah, I got the sell cross real quick. I'll put in my stop. You know, that kind of uh, setup overall. Now, still in red trend, so should we look at shakeout? Of course we should. You know, just we run through the gamut of the different ones. Negative three is still a couple of days away from even remotely positively turning into a green trend. And if the momentum maintains on itself, it should break out to new highs off that change. And it's pretty amazing. I mean, if we squeeze this in there, I mean, that those dots have nailed the bottoms on literally every one of these Apple, I mean, the Microsoft pops. So kind of neat trend change way back up here at the 29 range and even for something that doesn't move as much because you're not expecting as big a move you usually trade lar larger size because it is such a lower price stock and it's not going to move as much so um, become significant uh, let's go back to that 15 minute piece and this looks like a good question here let's go over it All right, so the question is, the power mo, yellow over cyan. Yeah, oh, I love those setups sometimes, too, when the, um, like, back over here, let me get rid of some of these extra, well, see, it, it's tough when I say get rid of, we still have to take into account the other indicators, even if we get um, one anomaly. Sometimes things are perfect, but sometimes they're not as pretty. And so that's where, you, you know, it can be confusing. It's like, well, what do I do? You know, do I get paralyzed? I don't think it's necessary to get paralyzed. Now, these were as straightforward as they get. You got the dots. You want to be looking for, you know, at least a little bit of that discount coming in off this one. Um, even if you got it over here, that was fine. Power Mo was in alignment with you there. You had excellent setup with the, the short here moving. So that one was perfect. Piece of cake. A little bit tougher right here because you get a green dot. And in this particular case, you have yellow over the power mode setup all right from an intraday standpoint can that change though in one bar sure can and what i would typically be doing in that particular case um what i expect when i change from red trend to green trend is typically about two bars lower so when this change to green trend and you get this little bit of a dip um I probably would have put my buy-in midway into this, expecting a little bit lower return, but not wanting to jump in until I made sure that it moved. And the fact that it came back up real quick, you know, fine, you'd be in that setup. Um, but I would look at my expanded ratio histogram, plain and simple. Because what will happen is you come from a red trend, deep, move up, gets to be what appears to be overbought, flips to... Um, the green, and then you get a little bit of weakness, and you think, oh my god, I made a mistake, I got it at the wrong time. Um, now, see, even with that, uh, that would have been a little bit more negative than I would have liked to see the yellow above on the ERH, and you'll hear me refer to it sometimes as that, the ERH, the expanded ratio histogram. Um, now, could you just completely just pass on that signal? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is so, well, there are so many things to choose from. Do you have to get into any one? No. And that's probably the hardest lesson to teach people because they see it and they think, oh my God, I should have taken that one because it went up the right way. You know what? You don't have to take any of these that aren't in alignment. You don't. Um, 
as you get more experienced with it, in particular if you have the indicators, you don't have to worry about these setups. Now, if someone from a dot alert standpoint is getting this um, in green, they're going to get a green trend, green dot, they're just going to buy it. They don't have the luxury of some of these things, or in this particular case, uh, you know, the warning that may have kept you out of the setup. But would it have mattered? You would have gotten this signal back over here later on, pretty close to the same area. So it would not have been a crisis per se. It's one of those where prudence, capital preservation should be the single most uh, important element in the way you uh, look at any signal whatsoever. Uh, some people are terrified and, you know, see red trend following knife setups. Um, I don't worry about that stuff um, as much anymore because we have very specific stops. They don't change. Um, you know, if it comes down to it, and this is why in red trend we try to look for discounts, and that reduces your overall exposure. You're still going to have losses. It's going to happen. Um, you know, well, Typically, most of these are around uh, anywhere from 69 to 77%. So you got to expect you're going to have three out of every 10 potentially lose. So from that aspect, you you know you have to be prudent. Now, the more of a discount I can get, the happier I usually am, because to me that cuts down on your potential drawdown. Okay, the further down I'm getting on a solid signal that hasn't turned on me. It's just that much cheaper I'm getting the overall setup for. So what also becomes interesting is, and this is another aspect of it, on that 15-minute signal, I'll turn around and I'll say, okay, you know, I get this 15-minute signal. What's my higher time frame telling me? Is my higher time frame ugly or is it strong? Well, in this particular case, it gave you a green dot buy. So correlating that to, where is that 15-minute? Did I leave it up? Where did I put it? There it is. All right, so this 15 minute came in at 12.15, so it's uh, 12.15 right here. This signal came in at 10.48, so even earlier. And then by the time you did get to that, you ended up with the red dot short. So at the close of that bar, it hits its target, gives you a red dot short. Um, yeah, no, I wouldn't take that 15 minute setup at that particular point. So that's interesting because um, you get a short target within the overall long setup that came in here. And that was a nice long. Jeez, that worked out perfect, didn't it? Um, I remember putting this one up. So 658 uh, with a 664 target. In fact, if we think if we go back to the stock twist tw thread, I had that because it was very bullish with this positive orange above. And boom, then you came down in the yellow. See, the yellow took over. Now, if the orange had pivoted and stayed above, I would have been more optimistic. I'm more optimistic now about the long side of it because the orange is back over the cyan and above the yellow um, than I would have been right here. But you can see that that bar closed right there, and then it shifted. So this is someone with the dots is not going to see this shift that you're going to be able to see right there. And that orange getting back there, giving that bullish spread. All right, And gosh, when you look at how many targets... PCLN has hit going back over there. Pretty impressive uh, overall from those uh, readings. And this is why I do the you know week in review for those overall setups. Where's Google? Where's Google in all this? There's a Google. What's Google up to? Oh, look at that short setup. You get this massive long, and all of a sudden you get a short setup. You think people would be like, you're out of your mind shorting. This is going to a million. It's going to 1,000. I get that all the time, let me tell you. I do. And sure enough, it puts in a short right there, and boom, hits that target. Then it puts in a long after that short, and um, turn around hitting for that target. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Interesting stuff going on in the markets. And I think we're getting into that kind of inflection point, and that's why we're seeing some doing well, some not doing so hot. Uh, kind of that mixed bag. Let me see, did I miss anybody's stock? Let me put AIG up there while we're here. AIG. Oh, another setup from a daily standpoint. That looks attractive. 
AIG right there. Doesn't have a dot set up yet. Um, let's see, now I'm going to have to go and look at my um, option setups for this one. I mean, we're coming into a monthly option expiration. Get this set up right here. Though the nice thing is AIG um, could get a decent move out of that. So that's, um, I like that one. Interesting. So people are going to be cautious on that. No problem. You see it retraced those positive extremes. These all got retraced, so none of those were a factor. What you had, though, was a higher high, um, pretty much equal shakeout. And so once that started to turn over, yeah, it was pretty much, let's see, we had 23, next bar, you dip down from there. So, And the sell signal came on this setup right here. So it was at 36.30. Now, oftentimes, when I get a signal like that, and this is something that throws people off, I will buy a longer range put, um, typically two months to three months out, and then I will look to get a buy signal after it's completed the retrace, and then either sell a put or and or buy the stock. This is exactly what I was talking about I did with the Apple setup, because got my sell signal, not a problem with that, and looking for my retrace, uh, particularly on a divergent move, I'm not worried about it when it's convergent, I mean, this was fine setup, there was nothing wrong with this, there was no reason to do that, but when we reach here, and you don't have matching higher, you know, shakeout with the higher reading, yeah, you can take advantage of those setups. Now, if we put our expanded ratio histogram, did we get confirmed setup with that overall. We had it right here when it first came. Still looked bullish going all the way through there until you dipped right about over here. But I have no trouble taking this signal and this is why I utilize this. And, and also why I haven't really uh, shown it. I just didn't think that it would be something that people would be able to uh, grasp with all the extra lines. Um, I'm pleased that more people have gotten it and, and it makes sense. Um, but this would be one of those where, you know, you don't have perfect alignment within that. Though I had expectations that I'm going to be retracing at least the minimum of this low. And um, I usually look for this type of setup coming after divergence for the shakeout to go back to a zero level. And you can kind of look at that um, historically. Um, some stocks behave a little bit differently, but it's not too hard to just scroll back through your time. But you look for points where you get higher highs or equal and you have lower shakeout readings. And those tend to give you um, really good divergences for setup. But this actually looks decent uh, from a buy standpoint. Um, still going to need an improvement for the uh, extreme histogram here. But other than that, got orange still above. I mean, that all looks nice. There's Apple from a 70 a minute. You can see that one didn't work out. But again, you know, you have this set up here. You're looking for discount in that. So in this particular case, it was $5. Now, we bought at the end of the day as a temperate thing. You know, it was like, okay, yeah, that is below where the discount was. But all we were counting on was a gap higher. And when it didn't gap higher, I mean, that was it for that setup. Uh, as far as I was concerned, because the expectation was that it should have bounced immediately from there. So I don't need to wait for that stop uh, to come down. It just isn't necessary at that particular point, particularly given what we saw from the daily readings. And the deterioration that started last Friday. And uh, when we were doing the last live broadcast, everything looked good, and I left. And by the time I got back, it had completely changed um, from Friday's reading when we were going over the daily for Apple. So it was a pretty dramatic move um, as far as the way the change was. I was just checking to see now that we've retraced back down, satisfied that short setup. I mean, it's just crazy to have a 15 minute short after that kind of decline. I, I mean, you do get that a lot. Uh, a lot of people miss that. They think, oh my God, how can it, you know? And this is where people then begin to think double bottom. Um, I'm starting to see some biceps there, but not looking that great. Look at my expanded ratio histogram should tell us. It's from a short time frame. This and then we'll take the 15 minute. I'll put up a 30 minute for myself. And I'll usually have the whole range going through here. But I'll even have it down to um, a two minute chart. That's me. So, no, that's bearish. <laughs> Still bearish. 
Look at this. Okay, red trend. You know, I talk about this with people from the orange being above. All right, we talk about maintaining red trend with the orange staying below. The orange has not moved above once. Is that downtrend intact? Is it clear? I mean, is it easy to see it that way? Yeah. You know, just is what it is. It's unfortunate because I know a lot of people um, really invested in it, and it's a tough one when it's not quite going the way you want. Caterpillar continuing to move nicely and with the market now up, so it's got some positivity there. So are there any other questions as relating to like the up-down power or even the power mo? Now, you got to keep in mind with the power mo too, you're going to get very dramatic changes in it. Um, you know, there's one that I'm actually uh, study that I'm creating, and I think I even have some charts of it. Let me see if I can put them up. Um, gotta remember where I put them. Oops, that's too much. No, that's not it. I'm trying to think of where I put those. Well, in essence, basically, what it was is, um, let me draw a line. You waited for shakeout reading to be over 10. I'm going to shake out indicator in here. So anytime your shakeout reading was over 10 and you ended up with a yellow over the um, cyan on your power momentum, counted four bars for your short. One, two, three, four, right there. And you would short looking for the thing. So this particular case, you're right at it now. You'd have to wait for your first one. Uh, going back here, let's see. Yeah, we were above. One, two, three, four bars would be right there. So that one's kind of, well, yeah, and then you end up with your bifractals. That's a problem. So I typically look for when I'm not getting a buy signal <laughs> into the setup. So like right here it happened. One, two, three, four. Yeah, right on the opposite side. So um, I'm running that one. I'm, there'll probably be some variations to it uh, that look for particular uh, unique setups. So there's always different combinations. And I run those in the strategies, and then we put them up. And uh, in fact, that would be on this page. I think we have Apple strategies running here. Those are 25,000 tick. ES daily setups right there with shorts. And I know I have my Apple 78 minute. Let me find it real quick. Because what the, the 78 minute does is it shorts in um, red trend. From an automated standpoint, let's activate that. squeeze that chart. That's not it. Got too many windows open. That's my problem. Yeah, well, there's the other 78 minutes. Let's grab that. Ah, that's the one. Oh, we've got way too wide a screen here. Let's narrow that down. See, so that just takes every the red trend and then shorts each of the different 78 minute bars. There was the last one. Got to grab the right spot there for it to move over. So sometimes it gets more, sometimes it gets less. It just depends on the volatility of the setup. Um, yeah, AIG, let me go back to that setup there, we were in the, this one right here, AIG from, the, I had my little thing up there, I was trying to look to see if there were other stocks, 
IBM, okay, we can go over some of those too. I got fat fingers today, I'm like clicking all the wrong stuff. Okay, there we go. IBM. Yeah, and this is why I went with um, stock on the Apple setup as well, uh, given what we were looking for in the negative trend. IBM. So that's 78 minutes. We want it daily. Google 78 minute. Had a nice buy signal right back in there in 78 minutes, second bar. Boom, hit that one beautifully. And then from that 15 minute standpoint, we just looked at that one. And Google from its daily put in a um, interesting setup, put in a gray dot, retrace for a short, and then put in a green dot buy. Um, let me go back to the AIG real quick, um, and we can look at that setup. I minimized too many screens and lost my special setup. There we go. That's one of them. That's 15 minutes. I don't want a 15 minute. There's buy signals happening everywhere. I'm just going to use the regular chart here and go ahead and bear with me one second here. I got all tweet. There we go. That's the chart I wanted. All right, yeah, from an AIG standpoint, definitely um, for dot alert setup. That's what I would be looking at from that one, as well as Google. And um, you wanted to see the AIG. The, the s let me get rid of a couple of extra lines here and I can make it uh, perfectly clear when we're looking at that. I converted this so that if anyone asks for it that has the indicators, I will send it to them for this version of Power Momentum. Because you can just, it's the same as the regular Power Momentum, it just has these extra lines if you want them. You can turn them off just by putting in that false. So the, the key here for it is obviously your white crossing below is a sell, and above the magenta is a buy. In these rare anomalies, you'll get the white, which is not supposed to go below the green, goes below the green, and the move back to it. That's a buy. Um, gosh, let's see if we have any others. And then, of course, you get these anomaly setups that uh, take place here. Uh, so here was another setup. It came below it. Didn't cross back above it until right over here. That was at negative 5 versus a negative 6 for the green. So gave it the buy setup right there and then uh, took off. Now, there's no way to know ahead of time that it's going to have that huge a run. Um, that's just the you know beginning stage of it. Sure, I'll send it to you. Not a problem. I mean, I convert it. And it's fairly easy with this because you can just change it to the true false. And then, in this case, I made the lines a little bit thicker. But I'll do that real quick so you can see how it functions. This is your right click format. So the initial power momentum, this is the histogram, the regular one, and these are the regular lines. So these d additional two lines are just right here. And the reason it's only two is because they are pairs. You have to have them as pairs. All right. So these two, which are inversely related at 1.618 to each other, should never touch, should never meet, um, 
should never really even get into proximation of one another, and yet you're looking at them crossing at this particular spot right here. So this is where some of the string math gets into, you know, a um, little bit more complicated aspects, but you can utilize these unique situations to your advantage because most people are not going to see anything remotely close to it um, at all. So it's an interesting one. BLK. Let's put up BLK. Good old Black Rock. Alright, so very nice shakeout. Mm, it's continuing to rise, getting pretty extreme here. But again, just like most stocks, that orange maintaining itself. Now, you had the negative divergence right here. The only problem you had was you didn't get really enough of the orange dip, so immediately on the turn, orange gets ahead of it and has not looked back, and that's why. Um, the short is never really fulfilled. I mean, best you got was this retrace of a positive extreme, um, which would have been the first short opportunity because they had the lower positive extreme, and you would have been looking for at least the low retest somewhere right around that uh, 213 range. 214 was the best it could do. And then you would see clearly here that this is staying bullish. There's no change there. Um, you had the short thing, and then boom, it turned around for a buy again right there. Now today, interestingly enough, now this is what's so bizarre about some of these readings and throws people off. Okay, it's giving a sell signal on an up day. Um, yeah, I mean it's modestly up, but that clearly is going to cross over for a sell uh, on an up day. Interesting, yeah, but that's fine. I did go over Microsoft, but I'll put it back, right back up real quick because, I mean, it was getting close to the target. So, we liked it back down here, took some additional heat when it was below there, but, I mean, I'll move it. Those are all the bifractals right there in a row. And this is why I always tell people, you know, you, you do have to trade more than one stock on occasion because uh, that multiple dots are going to give you diversification with that so that, uh, you know, overall you're not going to have, you know, just waiting for one stock to give you a signal. Um, you can utilize it on tons of them. And, you know, your preference becomes that, uh, just whatever your preference is. And you can search through tons of them. You can put alerts on. You don't have to. No problem. Happy to put it up there for you. HLF. Okay, so it came, hit the target. It was still showing continuation within the setup. Um, nothing wrong with it overall. What I look for too, and, and for those when you do when you do get this one, Michael, you're going to want to watch. What you'll see is this up incline, and then the downcline. So what happens often is you'll get this incline and a crossover for a sell. It's more potent when you have the beginnings of this downcline and it crosses over, and that becomes more of a strident kind of sell signal. So look for that when you have this, um, and you'll be able to see some of the nuances. They'll, they'll pop out at you really quick. Um, that's what's nice about some of these setups, and it's the same thing with the you know ERH. Once you get the hang of it, um, it becomes pretty clear. It's like okay, yeah. Now in this particular case, a little bit of an anomaly uh, in the setup. You had the huge orange down below. Uh, yellow got ahead of it. Uh, right when the stop came in, you were still consistent with it over here, and it was right about here that you got a little primary sell. Was it a problem to have taken profits at that spot? No. Because it was just shortly right after that you got another buy signal and then obviously the dot came in. So being prudent, could you then just turn on the ABM? Yeah. That's what I do typically. And in that particular case, if you were willing, you know, and got in at your, you know, earliest points, you can follow your ABM. It's not a, not a problem. In fact, the ABM now is just getting to the entry uh, of the original one. Would I risk that amount? No, I would still have a guaranteed profit locked in. And what I'll often do, and just from a money management standpoint, 
I'll sell a portion of the position at the target and then keep a remainder that's still locked in at a profit. And that way you always have the feeling, because emotions are a huge part of trading anyway, that you've at least banked some money from it. It's a winner no matter what you do. So the stress of it goes away. And that becomes important. Oh, the second derivative of purple goes negative, plus white crosses below purple sell. You're going to get into a couple of other ones because you also have the anomaly of the, um, the spike, like right here. And then determining, uh, you know, the ratio on which one's ahead, which one's below. And it's just so dramatic because sometimes you'll get these in the middle of a flat period, and that is what, to me, is always interesting, where it's not really doing anything. You know, like right here, um, this setup comes in right at this point. Well, why there? You know, what was it seeing in that overall setup? Well, you know, it's taking into account just an enormous amount of uh, calculations in that, and boom, it's giving you this anomaly at that point. You better pay attention. You know, I firmly believe that, you know, that's a great point. Gordon mentions it, that controlling risk, and this is exactly where I understood on that ample trade, I had a very defined risk profile, okay, because I already had the long put. What was I risking by, by going long the stock? Well, I was risking the fact that I wasn't going to make any money if it, if it dropped lower because of owning the put. If it went higher, it was a neutral effect to some degree because I already had the upside put, uh, though I still could see that I was in red trend. I wasn't worried about that per se. So the fact that it moved down a couple dollars, sell the stock, and then I can allow for the put to gain. So I had a small, narrow window of loss within my overall put setup. Big deal? Not really because, I mean, I traded it the other day for about the same, you know, intraday. Yeah, it's a neutral kind of, you know, setup. Um, but this is why I'm, you know, a fervent proponent of creating those hedge setups and that, particularly with stocks that we look at that trade from a weekly. And this is why, very specifically, I have us, you know, from our member standpoint, trading in the X's, the WLT's, and the CLF's. Okay, because these are both inflationary hedges, um, you know, and am I a little more reluctant to be active with... Um, financials in that at this particular point, yeah, because if there is a beginning move on um, those things, you, you got to be prepared for it. Yeah, the Apple setup was no good for anybody. No good for anyone. Um, that's going to happen, unfortunately. That is trading. But overall, that setup from the orange dots, I mean, it, you, you wouldn't get any better. This is what I talked about, too, from the daily standpoint, that if it got ugly, it would get ugly and stay ugly. And that, you know, it would be one of those where you'd want to convert to the opposite side of it, because once these guys get their target hit, boom, they turn around, go the other direction, and drive it even lower to try and recoup some of that. And this is where I'm always like, you know, no, nope, that's what the number was. You flip over, you change. Um, can I still have a buy stop up at this level on that one? Yeah. But overall, still on the put. I have that one through February, so, um, you know, I feel bad for everyone else who's getting, you know, caught in because this looked like a very nice setup. I mean, everything about it was perfect. You just couldn't get any buyers. I mean, look at this from our shakeout stick. We had the higher shakeout. It was looking good, and we were right here at the inflection point on Friday. And then, boom, Monday went south, and our shakeout started moving lower, and that was it, and unfortunately, right here to the Power Mo, you know, when we looked at it during the day on the Friday, it was looking nice, and then it turned around from here being positive, we can see the numbers, the 12 over the 11.87, and then on Friday, it just went the other way at 11.45, 11.37, that precise setup uh, just by the close, you know, nothing wrong with the read on it, it just converted within that intraday setup. And this is why I typically don't get, you know, unless I'm trading an intraday setup, a 15 minute, 78 minute uh, setup like these, uh, in anticipation of a move, you can do that. But again, I don't hold a 15 minute chart overnight. That's not what that's intended for. 78 minute, yes. 
But on a 78 minute, I'm looking at my daily as well, saying, okay, does my daily have, you know, the right setups? If I've got negatives from a daily, then you have to uh, take that into account and say, okay, fine, I might just have to trade, you know, intraday short term until you get improvement from your daily. And then look at the 78 minutes. And that's why I've been going over um, daily charts with people on the um, different stocks because you really do need to know that before trading some of the, even the intraday dots. I mean, I to me, it's shocking that anyone would even consider day trading any particular stock without knowing what its overall daily prospects are, what projections those would be, and having a pretty clear idea of, you know, a general expectation. Uh, we can look at Facebook. We haven't looked at Facebook. I don't need that one. I want to use my enhanced chart, which I lost again. There it is. FB. Alright, so I pointed this one out that I had a sell signal yesterday on Facebook, right here. Okay. And continued to pop up a little bit, but didn't change that overall sell. Now, still not bad from an overall uh, expanded ratio histogram. So what I mentioned is, put the ABM in, set a stop, leave it there. Particularly if you close below that uh, sign on the ABM, I expect the... Uh, Red magenta most likely to get hit. What is D? Is that an actual symbol? Or are you just testing out whether or not the, the chat worked for you on that one? I remember we did the... Uh, Um, you know, people will get into that mode of it's so wrecked, the capitulation, but, you know, how many times have we seen from a capitulation move uh, a violent return back? Uh, let me narrow the chart range so we can see the overall perspective. Because, I mean, from my standpoint, you know, was Apple wrecked back over here when my trend went red, you know, at 700? Um... I didn't call it wrecked there. Everyone told me it was going back to a thousand. You know, and I stopped posting negative things about Apple um, because at this particular point, people were so in love with it that uh, it was beyond belief. By the time it dropped here, there was a lot less love. Let me tell you. Um, I even got a lot of grief after I gave this up signal to right here and then said short it uh, at the 650. And people were like, "You're out of your mind. It's going to 750." And boom. You know, it collapsed. So do we know, and, and so this gets into another, you know, area. Do we know that in this deep of a red trend, like when I mentioned right here when we dipped into the negative 30s, that this was going to take months to resolve? People kind of just poo pooed me and, you know, was, oh, well, you know, it, you know it's going to be fine. And I'm like, no, it, it's going to take months to resolve this setup, okay? So then a couple months later, and we're still at the exact same level after having given, a, you know, a couple additional shorts. We've had a few little pops in here. But like I point out to people, too, I mean, we're in an ugly setup with, an, you know, a bad move here. This was the best configuration we'd seen in months, months, going back through here. I mean, you had higher shakeout reading, given the same lows, um, you know, we were in good shape. And then it all came down to that Friday, and it flipped that Friday afternoon, literally that fast. Uh, on a Friday afternoon. Now, do I know that if someone got a hold of some information later on, there, is it, it's possible, who knows. Uh, but from a reading standpoint, we were good until, you know, that closed on Friday. And, you know, this is just a continuation. So we played with a very, you know, constrained little day trade setup 
within that. And this is where, you know, it's tough with 140 characters sometimes to go over with people. You know, the, I mean, I try to be clear about, look, you know, I already have an upside put. I'm not too concerned about taking that for an open. Um, but it was like, I think there was uh, this P. Stewart or whatever who was, you know, at long calls. He was like, you know, what should I do with them? I said, well, you know what? You can play for the gap open. If you don't get the higher gap, uh, it's over. You know, it's pretty much uh, as simple as it got. And that's where, you know, when it didn't gap up, it was boom, done for me. And you just have to wait. And gosh, you know, I mean, it's crazy when we're looking at these 15 minute uh, Apple setups and you're seeing absolutely no uh, support whatsoever or even buy interest at all. And um, I mean, from a dot standpoint, we were just getting shorts right here for Apple going into the end of the day. You know, what do you do with that setup? I mean, that's just ugly. Deep red trend getting more, and, um, and actually, if you had gotten that yellow to dip below there, that could have been a positive, but it see, it didn't happen. This is a bullish setup right here when you get both of them dip below equal in, and you look for the orange down uh, below it, but uh, it didn't happen that way. So the setups become, you know, fairly, fairly specific. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, see, this is what we were talking about. And I mentioned to you, it's like, okay, you know, you all we had was this, this gap play. That was it. Well, glad to have you. It's, uh, and this was a perfect setup in this particular um, case. I mean, everything was good for trying that. But like Sherry pointed out, and she was very accurate with this, there was nothing about any reading that looked good. And I agreed with her. There was nothing about any of the readings that we had that looked good uh, for the prospect. And that's okay. But because if we did get the gap up, we could have had what would have turned into, um, and this is where you can kind of, it, it would turn into what we call a catfish because it's a bottom feeder. Because if this dip right here below the red line on the uh, extreme histogram moves higher, you get one of these setups, the, the pivot. You know, and that's your pivot move. And that could still happen in the next day or so, uh, much less likely given the fact that we've dipped so far um, below that negative 71 now. Uh, any dip is still likely to keep, a, uh, any pop is still likely to keep us below the red line, which is more likely to be this. Now, what was positive from that when we were looking at it was um, that expanded power momentum where we had dipped below both the green, and that's what we were relying on for that potential gap setup. Um, and that, that's all it was. So it was just for the gap. And, um, you know, I understand that, you know, sometimes it gets tough to even contemplate taking a loss when it comes to calls. But that's the danger of playing some of those from a weekly standpoint. Um, I still like the setup that we had. Uh, it's unfortunate what happened on Friday changed it. And it, it's just that clear. Now, if, you know, you're looking at your chart, and I had been there on Friday, I would have warned everyone, I'm like, look, you know, we had the turnaround. I just, I wasn't here to do it. And that, uh, unfortunately, is the, the reality. I just wasn't here for it. And that's why I wasn't long, uh, you know, the setup as far as shares goes. I still had the, the overall put. Um, but I was concerned that, you know, I may even suffer a slight, you know, gap up from the setup. So um, it wasn't until I saw it on Friday that it had turned. And you're like, oh, you know, unfortunate. Wow, that M is going to get close to that target there. 38.16 is the target. At 38.04, so within a couple of pennies. That was a pretty good one. Five twenties, okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> for a weekly standpoint, no, we're not getting to 520. I think we can all agree on that one's not good. But that was a good shot from where it was starting out. Um, it looked pretty decent with that original one. And then it just kind of flipped. And I think that's, you know, that becomes a whole separate course in talking about how to trade options and being willing to accept some pretty significant losses when trading those. But you're also going to have some pretty huge gains. And that becomes a money management um, and risk assessment. You know, it's not worth putting everything you've got into any one stock, let alone into an option. Um, but that also gets back to the same, you know, issue that I have with people who come out there and they'll post, oh, I made 400%, 600%, and it's like, well, you made that if you were betting the exact same amount, and when I say betting, 
when you're playing some of these weekly options, it, it can become a bet. Um, there are you know, very specific risk probability trades you can make within some of those, um, but those typically have to be a smaller portion of your overall portfolio. Well, you know, and this M1, um, it was funny because I literally put it up in response because this other guy was uh, posting his charts. And, I mean, some of his uh, charts were fairly decent. I mean, just standard technical analysis, but this is where you get some of these unique points. But, again, you know, you look at this setup, this is the exact same setup as Apple. So, you know, could it have gone exactly the different way? The only difference was you had the support of the Power Mo on um, – this setup on M compared to on Apple. And it literally was that tiny a fraction. I mean, and we go back and look at that number. That small a fraction turned it completely. And people, people will say to me, well, how is that possible? Well, <laughs> you saw how it's possible. Um, you know, literally that small a distinction. I mean, it's amazing, but uh, that's what the numbers are all about. Finding those kind of unique situations. So were there any other particular stocks that anyone wanted to look at, like a CMG, let me put that one up, because um, I think that one actually gave a sell signal as well. Oh yeah, I put it up uh, the other day, and um, it was good. Let me change it to CMG real quick. God, I'm getting a slow response from my computer. It's the HD screen sometimes. It just uses up a ton of uh, RAM. All right, Chipotle. Chipotle, not looking so good from that setup right off the bat. Did it retrace all the way to this uh, red dot? Come on, it's not giving me my lines. I need to find my other chart. All right, that down target. Any 165 WPRT. I don't know if I know that one. 290. So, okay, did reach down to that low, filled that target on the downside for Chipotle. That's interesting. Still moving. IBM struggling a bit. Let's put up this other name WPRT. starting to work very hard. It must be processing a lot of extra numbers. We've got 10 minutes left in the market, um, so something may be about to happen here, because that's usually what happens when it's having to process an uh, extraordinary amount of extra data. WPRT. down a little bit. All right, nice chart here. We ended up with the oversold, converted to a green trend, got overbought really fast. That was a negative point right there, gave the sell signal right here. 
then the orange dot came in with that buy, but it quickly converted over. So it should be just about ready for a nice up move. Uh, you're not quite there yet. You may have to wait another day or so to get that signal. Natural gas. Okay, so yeah, you, uh, well, if you're looking at it, now I'll send you the uh, power mode too so that you'll have it. But um, yeah, that looks like it may need another day or so, but um, excellent discount off the orange dot, particularly in a green trend. And it was positive there, but you can see how quickly that changed. I mean, you had the positive read here with the orange above, and then boom, the yellow took over. Um, but the orange is back now, so that's positive. And um, you want to look at that BLK real quick for BlackRock. All right, let's see how it looks going into tomorrow. And literally, that's interesting because sometimes you have to wait until the last like five minutes to see if some of these daily setups can change, particularly if the numbers are close. I mean, you can see how close it got with Apple there. B, L, K. slower as we get close to here. I mean, we're processing some serious data right now. There we go. Alright, so we gotta type in B O K. My god, that took a while. So, 4407, 4494, that is going to give a sell signal to it for tomorrow. Now, let's see, 4378, the current reading, 4494, so that's still rising. So, this could be one of those little up-down setups to start with because the um, pink didn't decline, still have that going to the positive. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a problem to hold. I would just move my stop up with the expectation that, you know, you could have... Uh, this crossover by tomorrow uh, fully and then start a down climb because what you're looking for in this particular case like this one right here uh, was pretty close to even 47.81 and next day was 48 see so it had a slight incline got the sell signal and it was just a modest drop didn't drop a whole lot um, but clearly that is going to be a sell from this uh, power mo setup and my god, this is all still operating off this anomaly back over here uh, for a buy setup. And you can see how that's skewed because see, there's no limit downside upside. You know, oscillators don't do that. They have uh, limitations and then they stop. So, But I think that will do it. Uh, hopefully, you know, that made sense with the up-down powers. We went over the power mows on those setups. Also looking for, you know, your resets of shakeouts, particularly on imbalances where you have higher highs on uh, lower shakeout readings. Typically look for those to retrace back down to the zero level and reboot. So that's the general idea with those. Hopefully that was good. If you have further questions, you can always just uh, leave them here and we'll get to them. But uh, continue to look for me on StockTwits. Trade well.